Okay, this is part 72 out of 100, whatever. Uh, so we're going to take a little intermission from the comics. We're going to show some of the merchandise we got. Because we got boxes and stuff. So when I bought this collection, um, I had to haul all the stuff out of the attic. Like I said, he's an old guy. You know, he can't get up and down the stairs as well. Oh, he still golfs like crazy. So, um, so I'm hauling stuff down. I'm just bringing down boxes of anything that looked like comics or cards or toys or whatever. And he's like, yep, put it in the pile, put it in the pile. I want this much money. I said, I will write you a check for that much money. And cross my fingers. So I'm going to just show some of the stuff that we got. Just because it's kind of fun. I don't know if any of it's really super great. Got like a Wonder Woman, beat up Wonder Woman doll. Uh, oh, yeah, these. So there's, these are in garbage bags somewhere or grocery bags or whatever. He had a really good run of Overstreet. And I don't know if there's a number one. I don't think there is. This is number six. Overstreet number six. And there's like bags of them. So he probably has... So if you own a comic store, pre-internet, everybody had like a library of these. You know, you got these every year and you just, for some reason, you kept the previous years. So like everybody had a uh, run. So this is 1976, Overstreet number six. Let's say you wanted an Action Comics number one. What would you have to have paid? You would have had to pay $4,000 in near mint condition. $4,200. bucks. That is ridiculous. Who would pay $4,000 for a comic book? It says 10 cents right on the cover. But again, that was, book was only, what, 35 years old. Again, the stuff, the stuff that throws me off. That's all like, in 1976, an Action Comics number one was like, a book from like 1985 today so like gi joe number one transformers number one today that's how long ago action comics number one was when this came out it was still four thousand freaking dollars um I'll do, I'll do amazing fantasy and then do detective so these are kind of neat I, I picked up a couple they did supplements and stuff i picked up a couple from this guy like from the 80s or early 90s that i was going to look at and kind of compare prices so uh whew, man okay so amazing fantasy came out in 1962 so it would have only been 14 years old so it'd be like a book from the early 2000s today but you would have still had to pay 160 dollars for an amazing fantasy what's that 160 bucks who would pay that for a stupid comic book i don't know smart people I like how this is all written with a typewriter, too. It's all, like, just typed. It's all typed. So did he have to do that? So he probably, so Bob Overstreet probably did that, like, every single year. Typed up this entire thing again. I think that's more amazing than what they do now. Detective 27, first appearance of the Batman and Commissioner Gordon. Reprinted in famous first edition. $3,500. But it does have a note that prices vary wildly on this book. So $3,500 was near mint. You know, if you find one like good, $1,700, you know. Nowadays, good, half a million. I mean, I don't know. That book in any condition. Action Comics number one, any condition, hundred grand. Anyway, yeah. So there's a bunch of, over, a bunch of overseas, so those will be fun. Just kind of look through. These are kind of neat. So we got uh, like some Rocketeer. It's a cassette tape. The story of the movie The Rocketeer with 3D art and 3D audio. Oh, it's a 3D comic. Cool. Ew, gross. Not the content, but the thing. Desert Storm cards. Got the circle where something sat on this for a long time while well, they smoked around it for a year. Um, I know the, the near mint boxes of these unopened are probably about 10 bucks. Stuff is not that expensive. It's probably one of the millions of coffee mugs that we found in this collection. There's a whole bunch of coffee mugs. Oh, there's a Batman coffee mug. It's kind of neat. This was probably the, this is the oldest thing I think we found so far, and this is from like 1976. It's a Batman light switch plate, but it glows in the dark. It glows in the dark. That's really cool. I don't know if I want to sell it or put it up in my room. I could do that. I think my wife would let me do that. Get the Batman light. 
We'll continue on with Batman. More Batman. A lot of Batman stuff. A uh, set of cards. The uh, movie cards. 30 bucks that was. Came out like 89, right? 89 with the first movie. That's $30 for this pack of cards. Holy crap. I do not believe they're worth $30 now. Little Batman car. Batmobile. This is kind of neater. They did a lot of merch for Batman the movie. So this is a pack, a box of candy heads. With the candy still in them. And it's delicious too, as you can tell. Delicious candy. Um, is this unopened? Probably. Batman card series two, new second series. Um, unopened. I mean, they weren't, these were never taped shut. It's not like they came shrink wrapped, but might be a pack missing. But anyway, it's almost a full box. Let's continue on with that. This one is cool. This one we actually checked out, and I know this is complete. I'm like 90% sure this is complete. We only counted a couple stacks. Oh, Garbage Pail Kids, fourth edition. Fourth series. With a little poster. Lots of cards. This, we looked up. I mean, this is like, so This is a couple hundred dollars. Two or three hundred bucks. So that's cool. That pays for a percentage of the thing. Let me do the peewee. <laughs> and this we cleaned up. We When I say we, I'm usually talking about Drew. Got your talking peewee. And this was all like kind of dusty and smoky and stuff. And it does a really good job cleaning up the box and stuff. <laughs> Classic. Classic. I know you are, but what am I? Talking peewee still talks. That's cool. And then this one is, in my opinion, cooler. Talking Freddy. So cool. Did you clean this one up already? Yeah. So this was much more dirty. It's, it's still a little dirty, but yeah, actually cleaned this one up. It's hard to tell with the, the, like the starry background. Like. Oh, yeah. But I got one of these signed by Robert Englund. Robert Englund was in uh, at Motor City Con, I don't know, a few years ago or whatever. And I've been sitting on this thing since like 88 or whenever that came out. 89 came out. And I just had it because it was so cool. I was like, oh my God, Robert Englund's going to be at Motor City Con. And I thought I was like going to be super awesome and take it down and get it signed. And there's probably like five people ahead of me in line that had one. So a bunch of people got it signed. But I got him to, he drew like a little balloon and said, uh, Pleasant Dreams. And then Robert Englund stuff. Hi, I'm Freddy. Yeah, he is Freddy. It's <laughs> the best. That is the best. I love this. This one's not mine. Mine's signed. This is so cool, though. Hey, maybe a hundred bucks. I, this is a lot newer than I. Oh yeah, Marvel Superhero Squad. So a weird thing because this is Super Marvel Superhero Squad, which is like 2000, 2011. But hey, okay. I wonder if Jeff has this. My friend Jeff. I love that cartoon. He's a he's a big cap guy. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll want the cap. The. <laughs> okay, so this was. I so I just brought down boxes, boxes and boxes, and and uh, I mean it said baseball cards, but there wasn't a lot of sports stuff. But I went, it's not baseball cards, whatever. Screw it, I just brought it in. But it was all taped shut, so we like cut the tape. I said, what is in here? We'll never know. I went, oh, G Joe's, loose G Joe's. Storm Shadow, Snack Eyes, Baroness. So early, early. Well, there's one of the weird mutant things, but a, a blown apart guy. Oh, Sergeant Slaughter. There's another Snake Eyes. They're pretty loose, but that can be fixed. And the cool thing about this is, other than the fact that they're awesome old GI Joes, and they have some of the weapons, at least some of the weapons. We've sold all of our G.I. Joes lately in like the last two or three years. I got like nothing left for loose Joes. So these are going to be more expensive than the ones I put out last time that is apparently 10 to $12 a piece. It's not enough. So that was like kind of a bonus. I had no idea those were in there because it was a sealed box. Oh no, sweet. A couple hundred dollars in G.I. Joes. And then this one, here's another box that was, it was sealed and we opened it up and went, oh, more G.I. Joes. And then 
um, Secret Wars, that, and then you got the got like your superpowers Brainiac. I don't have a lot of superpowers. Oh, you got like your Christar, the Crystal Warrior. That's kind of neat. You got your Shazam. There's an Aquaman, Martian Manhunter. So a bunch of, not a bunch, but a couple. There's some superpowers. There's a Doom, and then uh, Secret Wars Doom superpowers: Green Arrow, Robin. You got Junkyard. You got your Rock and Roll. The guy with the police dog. I don't know what his name is. Police dog man. <laughs> and that's the dog for Junkyard. Anyway, cool. So, yeah, that was kind of neat that I don't have a lot of vintage loose figures anymore because we sell the crap out of that stuff and nobody brings it in. Not to, you know, beat a dead horse, but shit was a long time ago. You know, vintage Star Wars. I mean, this stuff's like 40 years old now. Like, nobody brings that stuff in anymore. And then this was all... Same thing. You got superpowers. What do you got? The, you got your Hawkman man. You got your Penguin. You got your Batman. You got your Lex Luthor. Green Lantern with the Lantern. Uh, Doctor Fate. He's a uh, he's a little pricey. I have a sealed one of these around here, kick around somewhere. Uh, and then Secret Wars. You know, Iron Man and stuff. So it's neat. We're gonna have some neat new new old stuff, new vintage figures. Which I think is cool. Uh, more of that. No, oh, just more. Just some Batman merch. These old PVCs. PVCs were really big back then, probably because they were cheap. So you got the little suction cup PVC. And the Robin. Apparently flying. Or hanging. No, he clearly looks like he's flying. You got the fist. Can Robin fly? I guess Bert, Robins can fly, right? See, I thought it would have like a string like this and then it would hang up there. Well, this goes. Anyway, so that's kind of neat. Oh, that, that goes. Goes, that goes with your. Oh, yeah. That's the poster that goes with the Series 2 cards. Neat. Uh, what else we got here? We got uh, more G. Joe's. We got the Native American guy. Actually, maybe a little bit. I collected G.I. Joe's when I was a kid, but only the first few se few series. Once it started getting into some of the weird stuff, the mutants and stuff like that, I didn't really... I think he's one of the pilots, one of the drivers. I didn't really get into him, so like some of the later ones I don't know. I think he's a pilot for one of the vehicles. But anyway, cool. Vintage Joe's. And then, and then, oh, we're like, oh, what's in this box? This is a nice heavy box. Rubik's Cube! But it's basically... G.I. Joe's, and then on the bottom is more G.I. Joe's. Dark side. So yeah, this will be cool. Oh, Falcon. So this will be cool. This will be fun to go on uh, go on the internet and try to figure out who gets what gun, and G.I. Joe's only had like 50 guns apiece. Okay, they had a couple guns apiece. Then we found these. These were neat. And surprisingly, like everything else, surprisingly expensive. Uh, I'm not going to take them all out of here. They're all pretty tightly packed. Unless it's a set. Um, no, it looks very random. So anyway, these were just little stickers. But they did a bunch. It's it like number 72. It's like here's Rogue's number 6. I don't know, we found like a couple of Punisher ones. And like, what were they, like 10 bucks or something? Like, like stupid money. Four or five bucks, six bucks. Like there's a Wolverine. So I think the main characters on these... Oh, cool, kitty. Shadowcat. I had all these, you know... And they came in like wax packs and you just, you know, opened them and... Deidre. Another Wolverine. So yeah, they were just out of packs and they're all like just really cheaply made. They're all like, here's a... You see the top? That's flush at the bottom. Like the way they're cut at the top, they're all just different sizes and just like really super cheap. And it was all just, you know, panels from comics and stuff like that. But like everything else, they're they're vintage, they're old, they're kind of expensive. All right, do we have anything else we want to do? Yeah, NASCAR stuff. If anybody's interested in NASCAR, 
Found some of these little snap tight models, which is kind of neat. A couple more. We got Jeffy Gordon. So that was my my first wife, my starter wife. That was her favorite character. Character? Yeah. Driver. Yeah, he was a character. Yeah, Jeff Gordon was a character. He was not very, he was either love him or hate him. So yeah, so my, my starter wife loved this dude. And then my dad loved the, uh, the Ford guys. So Billy Elliot, that was my dad's favorite, was Bill Elliot. Everybody's favorite. He was the what? most popular driver for like 20 years Was he? Like after yeah. Richard Petty or something? Yeah, so Billy, my dad loved Billy Elliot, but he also, I don't remember he had like Mark Martin and Alan Quickie and stuff like that he really liked. But that's why it's kind of funny that the Jeff Gordon, I know Jeff Gordon was really popular. Got a Lord of the Rings. The hell is it? Oh, it's a goblet. goblet. Character goblet. goblet. Collect all four character goblets. This is the fun part about, like I said, about buying blind blind collections. Jesus, 16 minutes. About buying blind collections is that you just. I didn't know what all this stuff was. <laughs> this is kind of a neat little 10, 50th, 50th birthday. Oh, we put $23 on them, apparently. But yeah, it's a, just a metal tin. Probably had popcorn in it. Popcorn tins were really big back in the day. More Batman tins. I'm going to open that's that. Got, that's got PVC figures in it, but that's got all the buttons. Oh, so then these kind of things. Kind of neat. I like those. And then this one had... I said this stuff was all mid... Not mid, like late 80s. 87, 89. So there's like buttons like this. You got your Lockheed, which I thought was cool. Little Tiger. And these are all, these are all licensed... You got a Yoda, like the only image of Yoda. They use this for everything back in the day. Superman pin, that's kind of neat. And there's some local stuff too. Saginaw County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Saginaw County loves visitors. Apparently so. Crisis, what crisis? Is that a DC pin or is that who knows? Macross. You can find that Elvis one. Oh yeah, so there's a couple of these in here which don't go for as much as I thought they would, but they're kind of. So you got your Elvis King of Rock uh, Confederate flag pins. Can't make these anymore. There's like three or four of them in there. There's a little Wonder Woman. So yeah, it's like a whole a whole thing of buttons. So that'll be kind of fun. There's an alien in my house. I'm sure that references something. Oh man, take this one too. Hit hard, hit fast. No mercy. And I mean, it's not a Karate Kid pin, but it might as well be. Twins. I don't know, just some different stuff. Kind of neat. Um, yeah, so that's that for now. I'm going to stop this one because that's where Jesus, we're at like almost 20 minutes. A bunch more stuff. And I told Drew you when sold we're... sold some stuff already. Yeah, I sold... Like mugs geez, everywhere. I've sold, like I've sold like a couple of the mugs. I've sold probably $100 with stuff on here. So yeah, I told Drew when he's going through and cleaning it up, I'm like, okay, the goal is I need to make all my money back on this stuff, <laughs> which isn't going to happen. But, you know, like, hey, if I can make a couple thousand dollars, even a thousand dollars on this stuff. And then when we hit the G.I. Joe, it actually seems possible. I mean, a lot of those Joes, they got to be 10 or 20 bucks a piece, right? All right. So that, oh, I'm going to go back and do some more comics.